Hi, this is Gemma from ASD Rocks. Just sitting here with Philip Bliss, dentist of the stars, the stars being uh, my two younger children, Bo and Finn, and wanting to get a professional opinion in regards to treating children with ASD. Very, very interesting one, which actually comes directly from one of our ASD um, uh, Rocks viewers. Many of our younger people, in this case, this particular child is 12 years old, has an oral fixation and has from very, very young, chewing, grinding uh, on anything they can get their hands on. In one particular evening at 12 years old, it was a sock. Yeah. So this chewing and grinding. My question to you is, can there be specialised, obviously, there's going to be an expense, but can there be specialised items created uh, almost, um, well, I know I know that there can be a nighttime grinding supper, something, I know that because you did that for me, but uh, is there something almost that would give them like something, a spring loaded? I see those kids with braces, they seem to have elastic bands. It seems, it almost like built in chewing gum or something that would give them that oral relief as well as fix. You've got to be careful. Um, and, and you're right, there is a, a fixation on grinding and chewing and you can see that with a lot of patients because they you often see children with splayed front teeth so the grinding that occurs actually causes the teeth to spread a little bit. Is that right? Um, and if it doesn't cause that then you get excess wear and it is an issue and it's an issue with non uh, affected children and adults and whatever. You've got to be careful because you don't want to put something into the patient's mouth, A, that uh, it's going to affect the way they speak um, and that comes back to the social side of things. Uh, you know, a lot of children without problems but have got dental issues can cope because there's not other issues going on in their lives. Um, you can deal with some of the grinding, chewing um, uh, need of, of having something in their mouths by having something in their mouths. Um, so, you know, if they find that there's relief by chewing on a plastic um, uh, stick or whatever. So it's what? It's not going to damn. What about chewing well, it might the do. teeth? It, and it, it might do, but uh, it, it's one of those issues that you might not be able to overcome. Uh, and trying to stick appliances in a patient where cooperation might not be what you would desire. Uh, either will be a waste of money or will add issues to the children's dental phobia that is just not worth it. Mm. Um, and some of these issues can be dealt with later on. With baby teeth, a lot of children grind, a lot of children excessively grind their teeth because they can and because the baby teeth are soft and it it's nice, it, it gives them a, a, a security thing. Um, and, but it does, you, you do often see that um, emphasized, um, but when it comes to adult teeth, then it becomes a, a bigger issue. Because again, you don't want the adult teeth to be destroyed, um, but you've got to balance whether putting something in a uh, the mouth of an autistic child uh, causes other problems that you weren't really. So, um, are there things that are there? Uh, maybe I know that when my children were teething, they had chew toys. Well, you can do use the same sorts of things, and they can with adult teeth. Absolutely, um, there it, it it doesn't. You know, you can. Um, package it however you wish um, and probably then pay twice the amount but just a very simple teething ring can give satisfaction to the children 
whether they're six years old or 16, 16 years old. Um, and does it matter? Not really. Um, you may just have to have a good supply of teething rings or things that are similar. I mean, there are specific things that are made, but they're basically teething rings that have been made with pretty colours or little razzmatazz things on them. But yes. They're teething rings. They're teething rings. So if if you do have a child that has a chewing or um, you know an oral fixation for chewing, uh, a trip down to Baby Bunting is better than chewing on a piece of plastic that might chip their teeth. Exactly. Uh, 16 or, or, or that they find chewing on pencils and then have the lead and stuff in their mouths, which some children certainly do. Yeah. Um, you'll, you'll often see the end of pencils well chewed and um, uh, looking fairly but brutal. But that's a child worldwide thing, even absolutely. I remember doing Absol that. Absolutely, and that's why it, 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 all these things that couldn't, can apply to autistic children very often affect other children as well. Mm. Um, and, the, it, it, and again, you can get autistic children who never grind the teeth. Mm. Um, so it, it, you, you can't label it as of such, course. you know, you're, you're going to grind. Um, you have to take each child individually and gosh, I've had a number of, well, I'm assuming they weren't autistic, but, but to my knowledge weren't autistic, but were terrible grinders. Mm. Um, and the worst ones have not been autistic children. Mm. So it, it, it's, I think we just have to be careful on the labeling, um, but be prepared that you're probably not going to be able to stop it. Um, so you want to manage it the best way you can. So give them something that's not going to be damaging to chew. Great. So if, if, if we do go down to baby bunting, uh, for example, and we've got ourselves one of those little, you know, filled yep. with water chew toy things. Uh, any gel, any specialised, uh, I know you have a totally different thing than what I have at home. When I come to see you at the dentist, you dip with the white and you put it on, you leave it for a few seconds and right. then you have different things to what I have. Yes, yes, yes. Is there a gel <laughs> or a something that you can put this on that will, if while they're chewing, it's fairly inert in flavour or whatnot, can help the teeth at all? Is there anything you, like... You can. I mean, there are toothpastes that have either got a very, very high concentration of uh, calcium salts in uh, or high fluoride. If the child has uh, is susceptible to a lot of decay, you want to use a toothpaste with a very high fluoride content. Um, and will you just read the back of the pack for that, or for what to find out what the fluoride content in a toothpaste? Sure, but you'll is. see it. I mean, there are especially in chemist shops. Uh, you'll see. Um, uh, the labelling, or many many dentists sell them, uh, toothpaste which have got a, a much higher fluoride content than uh, regular toothpaste. But I would always use a fluoride toothpaste um, because it definitely helps. Um, if you're in a non-fluoride water catchment area, which is rare nowadays in Victoria, but there are spots, then you have to think about uh, adding fluoride drops uh, on a daily basis, That's but there's not that many. There's not that many places now that don't could have you, fluoride. Could that be something that we could that could be done also to help a child's teeth? There's you can get fluoride drops for water. Yeah, you just add a few drops to uh, that you put into a drink, and it's Swill the same. Will it and spit? Or? No, no, you drink it. Um, and that'll it help. It gets the into teeth. it help. Hugely, it, it, it's um, the big difference between uh, dental care is now and dental care is 30, 40, 50 years ago. The only real difference that's occurred that's been hugely effective is fluoridation. And that's reduced decay unbelievably uh, from the days when I was a student and you would see almost every other patient come in with 
10, 15 fillings every time they came in. Is it the fluoride in your system or it touching the teeth? Say when you're in a fluoride it's catchment, a, that a, you're in a regular area, but you have a child that won't use toothpaste and you just drop it in and get them no, to No, no, if, if you're in a fluoride area, then you just use fluoride toothpaste. But if they can't... Fine. But if they're not... it. If they can't use toothpaste because of their sensory issues, could you just add a few drops and get them to swill it around and spit? Or yeah, being able to do that if they've got a sensory issue might be hoping for um, Noah's Ark. Something, yeah. Okay. Noah's Ark. Well, maybe. But, but so <laughs> it, it's uh, you, you're you're adding another problem to it problem that's already there what I would be doing with with children with sensory issues and you've got to experiment is again try the toothpaste a bland toothpaste but you can get bland toothpaste with fluoride in. It's not as fluoride doesn't the taste flavor though fluoride it's... doesn't taste yes but it, it you can massage yeah it's usually the actual texture that's the problem, not the flavour. Sure. So uh, getting any paste, whether it was whether it was tomato sauce or whether it was uh, toothpaste, it's the texture that's the problem, which is why the, the as, as a mother with it... Look, both my kids brush their teeth and they've been coming to see you since they were months old. But as soon as you said fluoride drops... My ears pricked up because we're always looking for alternatives of something to help us. If we can't get our children, you know, it's causing full-scale meltdowns and it's the texture that's the issue. Is there a benefit in adding a drop of sure. fluoride to the water? Absolutely. And is, the question is, is it swilling and spitting or is it having it in the system that's the important part? You don't want to... You don't want the child to be drinking uh, extra fluoride because that can affect the teeth aesthetically. It can change the... But fluoride in the water generally gets built into the structure of the teeth and strengthens the uh, enamel hugely. It also strengthens bones. Um, so there is an issue there that ingesting fluoride uh, at the recommended uh, world health levels um, only has benefits. Uh, where either there isn't any fluoridation uh, or you're not on, you know, if you're in the country and you're not, you don't have um, supplied water, that it's water from the heavens and from dams and things, then you need to add fluoride drops. And where do you get fluoride? Chemists. Really? Just over the And if the you canteen? can't get them from your chemist, you you should be able to get them from your dentist, who, who can order them for you. Over the counter type stuff? Absolutely. You don't need a Absolutely. script. Fantastic. No, 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 no. Um, so I, I mentioned before, we're getting to the end of our um, end of our interview, and I did mention before about a particular child who um, has a grinding uh, issue. Uh, they They took their child to the dentist he was uh, I believe he's 12 he was given Valium and gas and he still would not let the dentist near him now I, my suggestion immediately was ditch that dentist um, and start afresh and you know start with exactly what you had suggested going going up and down not doing anything um, but uh, in extreme measures where where you you know you haven't got your you, I mean Valium and gas I'd be pretty happy um, sometimes it's not enough the issue is twofold one is whether it's an emergency type treatment if the patient is in pain uh, or having really difficult issues and the Valium and the sedation's not working, you have to have a general anaesthetic. Uh, no question about it. Um, I believe and you this won't, is may, just... no, you may not have time to do the niceties of two or three visits and building up the confidence. Mm. But you need to do that after the general anaesthetic and when the child's not in pain. If it's a routine treatment, totally different situation, 
it still may come down to the fact that that particular child is untreatable uh, and may still need general anaesthetic um, but it's not as often it's not as needed uh, as one would imagine uh, if you trust. absolutely uh, and the problem is that a lot of practitioners uh, haven't got the time to devote to spending visit after visit not doing anything uh, and find the, yourself the, one that does absolutely and the one of the issues that, that I find um, a worry is uh, many practitioners, many dentists do the general anaesthetic as a first option and that doesn't help anybody. Okay. Uh, why every six months? Why are we coming every six months? What why, is? Why not? No, no. No, I know. I mean, why I know. six? Absolutely. Why? Why not? Why and not again, not? this it doesn't have to be every six months. Uh, I always like to see patients every six months for two reasons. One is that you're building up more and more confidence and trust. Uh, you can pick up a little cavity, a tiny cavity here, or a little issue developing there that wasn't there six months earlier, you can deal with it very simply. As I said, most routine restorations on children can often be done without uh, any injections. Um, and for children, it's very important to see the, the growth and the development. Um, in my practice when I was working, uh, one of the delights uh, that I had as a dentist was to be able to change uh, children's uh, profiles and smile uh, appearances uh, with just simple little plates and appliances yeah. that made a world of difference. But if you're not seeing them on a regular basis, you, you don't get a composite picture as to what's growing and what's developing. So a clean and a check. I mean, I actually have suggested um, when introducing children to the dentist on the ASD spectrum um, that in the beginning it's far, far more often than than every six months uh, that you, for the, when you're starting to do it, to go to first to meet and then a week later to sit in a chair and then a week later to, you know, um, and that's just that that routine so but it but there's no it seems to be a worldwide thing I go to the dentist every six months and I was just wondering like you know is that is that a, an oral thing or is that just a so we can have a look and make sure because so, you do so different in, things to me that that I do at home that's right <laughs> um, but you get uh, some patients that you really only need to see once a year um, and some patients you might see uh, occasionally every two or three years and they don't have any issues. They don't, you know, they may not have much of a build-up, their oral hygiene's great. Um, a lot, and maybe we haven't spoken too much about this, but um, a good diet and keeping children off sweets and sugary foods and drinks is vitally important. Uh, if, if nothing else, one of the things that's going to make life easier for the mum, for the child, for the dentist, is just trying to avoid the level of sugar. I know that soft drink is one of the worst culprits, but what really interested me was when you told me the difference between a sweet that sticks in the teeth uh, like a, a cookie where it gets you know it gets stuck and it sticks in the teeth as opposed to something that you sort of um, will chew and swallow and it will dissipate uh, I, I didn't realize that uh, you know any kind of of lolly and sweet that stuck in the teeth was of more danger than another kind of lolly with the same amount of sugar that doesn't stick in that the, the issue is uh, if you can go and, and aim for a, um, 
the lowest level of sugar in the mouth, the better. With anything that's sticky, a toffee or whatever, will hang around and the, the, the issue is that the sugar breaks down to form an acid. And it's the acid that then breaks down the surface of the enamel, causing a hole, developing the decay. Uh, the more you concentrate on reducing the sugar level, the better. Now, obviously, some children uh, crave a sugar all. level at some time. <laughs> no, not all, but some do. Um, and if you're going to give your child anything in the level of um, a, 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 a sweet, then make it something that is easy to chew and get rid of. Um, now, we're only talking from a, a dental point of view, but you've got to remember the effect of those sugars of course, of course. Uh, on the body generally and um, uh, the insulin levels and all this stuff. But it, it's, it's very vital that especially any child um, should be heading for uh, a diet that it just doesn't feature sugars in any possible form if if at all possible i mean i know with you my own in. children you take them and they go to a birthday party and they just sit around where the sweets are because wow we've not we've been denied these <laughs> um but in the general diet and the odd sweet here and there is not going to be a big deal um but you see some uh, families where they are buying uh, bags of sweets, bags of lollies, and yeah, and and it's it's a disaster. I think for me and my family, uh, soft uh, fizzy drinks have we've never had a fizzy drink yeah. in the house. So, lot, yeah. Soda water is the only fizzy drink, and we add a bit of lemon. Uh, juice to it if we want but for me uh, the I'm not and we have plenty of sweets uh, but um, we just do not have a soft drink what about this this is my question now this is not our interview paper what what's with this chewing gum fallacy and the saliva thing and the it's actually very interesting um, uh, many 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 years ago um, when I was first introduced to the benefits of chewing gum, uh, what what it does is to increase the saliva flow, which washes and dilutes the acid levels in your mouth. Strangely, even even chewing gums that have got that taste sweet, it's much better if you're going to chew gum to no chew sugar gum, to do, absolutely. But it strangely does have benefits. It does. Can, Without, yeah, without hesitation, it does have benefits. It can also pull out a few fillings, but that's a that's a, <laughs> an issue, another issue. But it does increase the saliva, uh, and the more saliva you have, and this is in any medical um, issue, when the saliva drops, you can often get a rise in decay, uh, and you've got to be very uh, aware that drinks that you're having in that level um, aren't the Coca-Cola type drinks, but are you know milk, water, um, apple juice. Some of the uh, drinks like uh, orange and lemon juice can be an issue. I've had patients. In now the he past. tells me. I just told you I put no, lemon no, juice. No. But, but, <laughs> Um, diluted it's not such a big deal but I had a, a patient a few years ago who was addicted to oranges and would eat seven or eight oranges a day and it when I looked first in his mouth it looked as though somebody had down, done a crown preparation on every tooth every tooth he had was conical uh, where he had dissolved the enamel from the acid. From the acid or from the from the oranges. Wow. Uh, and in days gone by, in the fifties and sixties, especially, a lot of the women's magazines would say to get whiter teeth, you rub lemon on them. Uh, and what that did was to dissolve the enamel, 
And in fact, rather than whitening your teeth, you saw this ghastly, browny yellow surface underneath. Um, disaster. Yeah. So you have to be careful with uh, citrus fruits because they can be, you know, the odd one now and again, fabulous. Everything in moderation is Absolute, always good. Absolutely, but um, having a lot of orange juice um, does create a higher level of acid and okay. often sugars in your mouth. So better apple than orange? Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so that's that's pretty much us done, and I thank you so much. And I'll be seeing you in May. <laughs> well, the boys to. will be anyway. Uh, any advice that you have for ASD parents that you want to add your own two cents worth for anything? No, I think you just have to shop around, find the the dentist who you get on best with, who is tuned in, and a lot of dentists are tuned in. Uh, These days, with the explosion absolutely. since the nineties, but, but yeah, I mean, find somebody who you can talk to easily, uh, who's not rushing you through, uh, or is prepared maybe to see you at the end of a day or end of a morning, uh, so there's no uh, conflict with keeping other patients waiting, which is the other always the issue. Um, and, and you and have go on never recommendations. run off time. This is the, the only dentist no, I've... <laughs> you, I tell you, if your appointment is, is 10.02 in 53 seconds, you're ready at 10.02 in 53 Absolutely. seconds. It is amazing. So, all right, well, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. I really do. Okay. Uh, because, and, and in fact, I know uh, I'm going to be bombarded with questions I'm going to be emailing you with. Well, I'd be more than delighted to answer them. And uh, I don't know, maybe if there are a lot of other questions, we'll do another session that in a few fun. weeks and we can answer and go through those issues. Well, I'm going, if it's okay with you, I'm going to bring my camera in uh, with Bo next. Uh, in May when he's due and we'll just film the session about how comfortable he is with you now because he does trust you so much and there is a lot going on in that mouth of his Absolutely. right now. All right, thank okay. you so much. My pleasure. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Fantastic. Oh, Philip, thank you so much. A pleasure, my love. You can stop recording. This is going to be, yes, you stop.